I have a few fragments of my past on this channel. I have spoken about trauma and about autism, but I have never told my story and the reasoning behind starting this channel in that regard. So now I want to do that. I was born in November 1992 in Lidköping in Sweden. I was born autistic, but we didn't knew until later. I was quite severely bullied in school. The girls were pretending I didn't exist at all. But the boys were even worse. They used me as a punching bag or sexually um, assaulted me as well. I was a sad child. I started to self-harm as an 11 years old. When I was around 12 years old, I got into the children's psychiatric hospital for my self-harming issues. When I got older, it became more and more serious and I did also use sex as a tool to harm myself as well as drinking too much alcohol and such. At the age of 13, I got into a children's care home because nobody in my family knew what to do with me. When I was 14 I got my first psychosis. They locked me inside a closed psychiatric ward for children and I hated it. They used forced methods there. I missed school a lot due to not being able to do the most basic of things. My psychosis and depression was crippling. When I turned 18, I got into a re rehabilitation center for my self-harming, but this was horrible, a horrible uh, experience because it was a home for like criminals and uh, people that was locked in due to being criminals. And I wasn't a criminal, I was just self-harming, but they didn't know where to put me. So they put me into that psychiatric ward or rehabilitation center that was aimed for criminals, even though I wasn't a criminal myself. I was so mistreated, both from fellow patients and from most of them were men and from uh, the people who worked there as well. They had moldy food and they also used forced methods, just like the psychiatric ward I was in when I was a child. And I have trauma because just because of the forced methods they used. I didn't want to stay, so I pretty much ran away after a while. I met my now ex-boyfriend when I was 19 years old and had gotten my own apartment. He was nice in the beginning, although 11 years older than me. Uh, after a few months, he started to beat me up and rape me in various ways, almost da daily. I got broken ribs, I was always covered in bruises and I had never ending pain between my legs due to the mistreatment. One time, he tried to kill me even. He and his friends raped me together as well. I ran away from him and uh, because I didn't know what to do. Uh, when I was 26, it was just recently because now I'm 30, so it was four years ago. Uh, I was raped on a date. It was a few years after I broke up with my ex, like I said. I reported to the police, but nothing happened, even though I had internal wounds from the assault. When I was 27, I got a physical autoimmune chronic pain illness that affects the joints and muscles in my body. Injections and pills were now my reality. Doctors think that my severe mental stress partially caused it to break out this early, even though I had a risk to get it from older family members anyway. At the age of 30, I got into trauma therapy, and I'm still there today. I have done 
a few remarkable things I have survived, first and foremost. And I'm so proud of myself because of that. Now I have a beautiful apartment. I'm studying theology and philosophy. And I'm also self-studying herbalism and uh, a few other spiritual topics. I'm very proud because I'm here today. Many people wouldn't. Now I'm even writing a book about my memoirs and about my story to get it out there. And I also did start this YouTube channel to post my life stories and memoirs in the video format. Just to show that my story isn't shameful or anything of that sort. My story is of strength and of wisdom because I need those things to survive. I will continue to raise awareness about surviving trauma and to live with mental illness and with autism. Because I'm Trisha and this is my life purpose. But I'm not only those things. I'm also an aspiring herbalist and a student of life and a lifelong learner. A musician, a composer, a visual artist and also soon to be a writer and author of my own book about these topics of life purpose and being me, how I became the person I am today. This is the story about how I survived. Getting my life together at 30 years old. This is a new chapter in life. I think I finally starting to pull myself together, starting to see what I need and what my boundaries are. And I have grown up a bit. I have never been so content in life as in this moment. I see most things differently from just a few years ago. I have started to identify my values, my goals, things that are important for me now and most likely important for me in the future as well. And that doesn't include the impossible high standards I had for myself before. The first thing I have made a change about is how high I put the bar for myself. I have lowered the bar quite a bit and I give myself room to breathe and I don't have those impossible and high standards as I had before. Another thing I have made a change about is to just do what matters to me. I have learned to prioritize what's truly important and to me that is my spirituality. Honestly I have been in a spiritual slump for quite a while now but I gently pull myself back by reading witchcraft books and just reading and researching topics I'm interested in such as the dark moon, shadow work, deity work and spirit work and herbalism and I make space in my life to spirituality. I have neglected that part of me for so long or it's just a few months now but it feels longer. <laughs> I don't know I have just done the bare minimum and yeah I have missed my spirituality and my witchcraft journey so much but I didn't feel like I was in a place where I could express it the way I wanted. So now I'm starting small with just a daily practice with tarot and divination and 
I'm preparing for deity work and spirit work in the near future. It's fun to do the research about different deities and I feel like I'm growing a lot by not rushing it or go too fast about it. So I'm getting my life together by prioritize things that truly matters to me. As an autistic woman who cannot work and cannot do everything I want and cannot do all the things I want that never typical people can, I'm trying to see what I am blessed with and to see the small things I have achieved and of course the big things as well. I have learned as a 30 year old woman with autism that only I can decide what's a big achievement and a small achievement in my life. Most things are different to different people and my achievements is not lesser than because I have autism and because I can't go to work every day. I have done many different things that I'm proud of. From being a published poet and contributed in different anthologies to getting myself out of an abusive and toxic relationship. Survived a crime done against me in 2020 and survived my physical illness as well. These are very painful things to deal with and that's why I'm proud I have done it. And also that I have finally identified what's important in my life such as my witchcraft journey and my spirituality and that's the center of my life because in spirituality it doesn't matter what you have achieved or what you don't have achieved what matters is your soul and your energy and it's certainly not anything wrong with my energy and my soul I was put on this earth to be a spiritual teacher and that is just as important as anything else neither more or less that's my life's path and I'm very content with my decision and my myself figuring that out I might not have a professional life but I have a spiritual life I started my spiritual journey for quite a few years ago now. I was around 15 when I discovered Wicca to begin with. But now I see myself as Christian pagan. And, uh, but I started out with Wicca. And uh, that's, uh, that was how I learned about witchcraft. I had a little break in my witchcraft journey when I attended church between the age of 19 to, I think, 25 and years old. And now I'm 29, almost 30 years old, and I have practiced witchcraft for the past five years, almost. So I had a break uh, because I was indoctrinated with uh, Christianity and I thought I was sinning when I was doing things that felt right for me. Uh, And when I started to attend another church that was more open, I uh, became my true self again. The focus in my witchcraft is spirit work and uh, 
um, candle, uh, candle magic and uh, herbalism and crystals, uh, crystal work. Um, that's my main four things I do in my craft. Of course, just spending time in nature is enough for me to feel magical as well. This is me. I'm Trisha, but you can call me Madam Bravenly. This is my sister's cute little dog. Her name is Lilo. And this is a bug. I just felt like I was <laughs> included in the video. What drew me to witchcraft is that I have always been interested in the occult and the, and the mysticism around the unknown. I have always felt drawn to the magical, the magical and the mundane. I don't think you need to do uh, very advanced things to be magical. And uh, I have always been drawn to that. I have been interested in witchcraft ever since I was a little child. I remember uh, doing... Uh, I, I was playing, I was a witch, and I was uh, doing pretty much witchcraft already as a five-year-old. But I didn't know that witchcraft was real uh, until I was a little bit older, maybe 10 years old. I realized that uh, magic is real, not as in movies, of course, but... The witchcraft we see, we see witchcraft every day and we don't realize it. And it is real, but it's not like in movies. And you can ask pretty much anyone who knew me as a kid. I was a very peculiar kid and I was uh, very drawn to the unknown. Thank you.